Hundred here. Welcome to the Elite League show. Kicking us off today on Saval Frontier is Twalali with a Mech Boy. There he is, teleporting Orc. That fights range combat puts us a good damage. Can also support, disrupt, build structures, and repair. Up against then is Ungrathul with a Farseer support hero that fights in melee combat. Powerful buffs, debuffs, and control abilities. She's got some wings, which means this is the Exodite Elite Scheme recolored black. It looks like. Looking pretty cool. Interesting matchup, I think. McBoy versus Farseer. We've got double shooters up. We've got some Howling Banshees. And we've got this map where the victory points are all contested, running north, east, to south, west. Slugger's going to meet the Farseer over here. If you can get a special attack, she'll do pretty well in that fight. These Dire Avengers getting so very close to this McBoy. Both behind the heavy cover, of course. But here comes some shooters to shoot these guys on the flank. And they do love their back. And there we go. Starting to melt those Dire Avengers now, but here come some Howling Banshees. Shooters having to back away. Banshees will give chase. Not opting to go for the Mechboy because he'll most likely just retreat away there. But those guys going for the garrison, what are they up to? They're just sprinting back as fast as they can. Meanwhile, Southwest, Farsia has left that point. Gone to cap some power. Mechboy almost got caught. Might get finished off here by the Banshee if they get one more hit. Shooters used in melee there just to kind of try and block their path. Dropped a model for it, but it might have saved their mech boy. For those that are new to the Elite League, it's a 1v1 event organised by Adila. Big props to him. Starts off in a league format where every player plays each other in a best of three series. You get points for winning and all that good stuff. With the top 12 players from the league moving on to a knockout tournament. I'm covering some of the best games right now from the group stage. Farseer gets away after engaging some orcs. Got a special attack off, but with sluggers and upgraded shooter boys there, she had to leave. Howling Banshees on the north east VP. And some rangers for Ungrathul. Killed something. Hold on lads, these are kind of support snipers. They got some awesome abilities can make themselves and their allies invisible, disrupt, all that good stuff. Uh-oh. Mechboy with his daka 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 big shooter. Painful for those Dire Avengers. Barely got away, or did they? Trying to force close combat and saved perhaps, maybe, by a Ranger Kinetic Pulse there to knock over the Mechboy. He would have got a full volley with his big shooter there. Might have finished off that lone Dire Avenger. Teleporting away from the Banshees, frustrating them. Yeah, that thing's a threat, for sure. Almost 38 piercing DPS. Combine that with some Shooter Boys. And the Eldar aren't going to stick around for very long. Aiming what's that is uh, going to be key in controlling these Banshees. These guys do have their big shooters, but they are up in the northeast. We have the Shuriken Cannon now for Ungrathul. Mech Boy can, of course, teleport in and tie those guys up, but then he'll be... Confronted by Howling Banshees, I assume, which is not good for him. Massive threat to low-level heroes, especially if they're not a melee hero. One-to-one -one cap, slight VP lead here for Twalali. More for Angrathul, another guarding weapon team, really. Not messing around in Tier 1. Twalali upgrading his units before getting something else up. Might regret that. Angrathul's going to have numbers on the battlefield and two shurikens to help control his orcs. Banshee taking a big risk. There's Guide, though, on the Shuriken. Helping to increase its range and getting that suppression. Banshee's casually capping under some Daka there. Looks like they're going to be okay. Dar Avengers with a grenade. They might look to get off. Nope, they're happy to stand and shoot for now. There's the grenade. Forcing retreat. Farseer almost ran right into it. And some more capping for Angrathul. A third Guardian weapon team, that must be a mistake. Mechboy teleporting in here to tie those guys up in melee. Prevents them from firing their ranged weapons, which is bad generally for a ranged unit. There are some that can hang about in melee pretty well. Usually they are Marines. Shooter Boy is just keeping watch on this northeastern edge. 
There's the guide on the Dark Avengers. It's one of the fastest starting abilities, increasing range and damage. Pretty damn good, as you might expect. Look at this. Farseer might get shot up. Down to 35 hit points, he does get away. Storm Boys now for Tolali to help combat. All these Guardian Weapon Teams, there's three of them now. Shh, was that a mistake by Angrathor? It must have been. Left them on Overwatch. I mean, I assume it is, but you never know. You never know. Now struggling to manage all these shurikens. These guys get way too close. He might have actually let those guys die. Just to free up some population from the upkeep. Banshee's getting in to counter-initiate the Storm Boys. And they will do a good job of that. Especially if they can get in a little bit early and use their war shot. They don't actually have access to their war shot yet. Sluggers getting a very good flank in there. Can the Rangers save them? No, they can't. Shuriken goes down. Now he's down to one. Angrathul. Some chopping on retreat now as a look at the power. Rangers may be the worst ever power bashing unit in the game. But they're taking shots. 500 to 465. Banshee's going to eat a lot of lead to their faces right now. I don't think this is worth it, ladies. Trying to get that generator down. They were just taking too much damage there. Farseer levels 2. 2. Mechboy also level 2 with battery pack going. Help support those Storm Boys which are notorious for rapidly losing health, let's say. Known affectionately as Bleed Boys because they drop models a hell of a lot in Tier 1. Rangers will back the hell off of here. There's a lot of Dakar to deal with. Farsi is mingling. Oh, she's going to go decap this. Fully matured wreck point up to plus 30, as you can see, that's per minute. Just have a quick look at these resource rates. Pretty even. Ungrath all decapping a wreck point will have a big effect. Dakar on the power. There's a war banner up from the mech boy. Providing buffs to nearby orcs. Can also activate it for a greater buff. And there's that global. Love the Dakar, I think. More Dakar, one of those. Just makes you better at shooting. I believe it reduces the cooldown of your weapon. You used to also have a passive chance of knockback, but that was removed. That was a nasty grenade. Very nasty grenade from Angrathul. Those shooter boys having to retreat these guys down to three models too. Not sure how long they want to stick around here. Rangers there popping them. Storm boys jumping in. Banshee's there to counter initiate with some power melee kicks you can see going in. There's the battery pack heal, but they did not want to stick around. Banshees are a massive threat to those guys. But they get away. Tier 2 for both players. Ungrathul, the first player to go. Not sure how that happened. Having three shurikens on the field. Didn't get any war gear though. Did not even, in fact, upgrade the Howling Banshees. Did pretty well for not having their, uh, their um, aspect. And therefore more hit points and stuff. Sluggers on retreat. Those guys do have burners. Power weapons that can burn down generators pretty well. And Grafthul then. I'd like to see some warp spiders up to frustrate these melee squads. But usually, when you get tier 2 with Eldar, you want a Falcon or a Wraith Lord. So that he could try to stomp into the lines with a Death Dread. The path to the power is... Not that long. If he's distracting the northeast here, a death tread could get to that power and burn it down pretty quickly. Lots of duck on the ranges. He's used them pretty well so far, Ungrathul, trying to keep them at maximum range. Forced to retreat there. They did get a slight reduction in their setup and tear down, tear down times in 2.8, I believe, but they did get some other pretty substantial nerfs. Those guys don't even have their Pathfinder gear. It is a Falcon from Angrathul. Tolali will have to respond. I'm not sure if the Storm Boys, with their heavy melee knob there he is, will be enough to deal with it. Notoriously bad at chasing stuff, Storm Boys, really. Pretty slow on their feet and they kind of tumble around. Setting off their jetpacks and having fun. And eventually hitting stuff. Rangers doing their thing. 
Farseer with Armor of Fortune. I was expecting Rune Armor for some Psychic Storm to further frustrate these Storm Boys with that suppression. They can jump out of it though, I guess. But not if you wait for them to jump first. Jericho's going to set up in the face of the Mech Boy. Orcs approaching from a good angle, but here comes a Falcon to pincer them. Some good firepower on that thing also allows you to reinforce and transport units in the field. Ungrathul taking a full retreat here, not wanting to engage from that angle. Battery pack heal on the Storm Boys. These guys could start to become pretty deadly. They can also get a Bomber Boys upgrade, which allows them to suicide one of their members for a big explosive death, which can be pretty damn effective. Shooter Boys getting a decap. Here's some tank busters in response to the Falcon. 371, 465, 1 to 1 cap. Uh oh. Shooter Boys will get away. Let's really use that kinetic pulse well. Ungrathal seems to be on it in a flash. Storm Boys going for a power bash to get one of the generators, I think. No! It survives with 7 hit points. They did not get that last attack that was needed. 1 to 1 cap here. Can Ungrathal get the mid? Looks like the mech boy is on the north the Farsi on the northeast. Fortune on herself to try and engage these sluggers, but it's not a good fight for her with no war gear. There is the gravity blade though. Good choice against storm boys and sluggers. Awesome disabling ability that deals some decent damage when it throws you back. Banshees now with their X up and with their aspect of strength. There you see the X up with her spear. A heavy melee weapon. Pretty formidable. I assume she has more health than the other models do. Varsia turns back to engage. Gravity Blade now in play. 65 DPS melee. Not too bad. And the levitation field is awesome. Falcon getting shots on the Storm Boys here. The Mech Boy. There he is to get the battery pack heal. Just in time, allows them to stand and trade with the Banshees pretty effectively, but wow, good grenade from Angra. I thought they did drop their Stormboy leader too. Awesome barrage on the Falcon, almost finished it off there. Can they get the last hit? Falcon, I think, went in the wrong direction. Should have gone back to base there. Should be able to stay away from those tank busters though. Orcs with some aggressive push pushes led by the Stormboys who are able to sit in there and trade much better now with their knob leader and with the battery pack heal supporting them. Autark dropped in by Angrathul, but she took a hell of a lot of damage from all that Daka. 371373 can sometimes be a struggle for Eldar to deal with these clumps of range units since they don't have a jump unit aside from the Autark herself, I suppose. You can kind of march Wraithguard towards them and blow them up and then protect your Wraithguard from melee with your Banshees, that kind of thing. Makeboy gets tossed aside by the Farsia. Teleports away, there we go. Gravity Blade being used, the Levitation Field. Misses the Mechboy though. Has so much Dakar on the Banshees. I might go down here, really struggling to get on those shooter boys and shut them down before they deal massive amounts of damage. Those guys got suppressed, which might save the Banshees. Looks like they are going to get away. That was dicey though. Wartok now has her spear, which unlike the Banshee's spear, is a power melee weapon. Stormboy is dodging that grenade and now getting on the rear armor of the Falcon. Jumping away now. Stunning the farce here on landing because of that knob leader. I guess she is unable to yet. She doesn't have the energy to use her levitation field, but gets away. Or top chipping in there with some damage. She's getting some XP. Triple cap for Twala Lee, who's tier 3 right now. These shooter boys are dangerous. Need to try and wait for the uh, storm boys to commit and then jump the Autark onto those shooter boys, I think. Sluggers on the prowl. Gonna take some shots from a falcon here. Have their knob leader. 
Makes them a pretty fearsome tier 2 melee squad. And there's that Swampum too, allows them to close the distance a lot better. Giving them some range damage reduction and a speed boost, I believe. 371, 231. Farseer grabs the mid. 2 2 on cap now for the Eldar. And we've got a Wraith Lord on the way for Angrathor. That's, a, that's bad news for the Sluggers and the Storm Boys. Can counter initiate them very effectively with its giant sword of doom. Uh oh. Shuriken, I think, has retreated in time. Yep. And a power bash from the Orcs. 352 to 231. Double cap for Ungrathul. Twilight Lee with a tank. Could be bad for Ungrathul. If they see it in time, they can get the Bright Lance for the Wraith Lord. Falcon's in trouble. Big, big trouble. And down it goes. Storm Boys, I believe, getting a last hit there. Wraith Lord has now been spotted. Looted Tank continues to be a good choice. Farseer gets shot down. Twilight Lee starting to have the better of these engagements now. Choosing targets well, using the Storm Boys very, very well. It's going on northeast. Banshees running some sluggers. Able to see them off. Banshees level 2, sluggers still level 1. And there's that looted tank. Getting the reinforced plating upgrade, giving it some more hit points, allowing it to use the big boom shots. Which is awesome. Wraith Lord goes for the Bright Lance in response to the tank. Giving it a shoulder mounted anti vehicle weapon. And we see a Bright Lance here. Going hard to try and finish off that looted tank. Oh, hey, we have a buff. It's the uh, Cult of Speed. Global ability of the mech boy giving more speed and a reduction in weapon cooldown for allied units on the field. Pretty damn good buff. The Wraithord can fire that Bright Lance while walking, which is amazing. Uh oh. That Bright Lance doesn't want to fight some Storm Boys though. Bortok disrupting to save it. Wraith Lord now getting stuck in. This could be a pivotal engagement here. Oh, might be able to finish off the Storm Boys. They got caught in the levitation field before they retreated. So they're going to take the full brunt of those attacks. Looks like they might get away. Farseer trying to finish them off. Nope. Banshees couldn't stick around too. There's so much Daka from the Shooter Boys. Unopposed firing away here they're doing so much work 184 231 couldn't quite execute the plan to get on those guys One eight four two two nine. maybe double rangers would have been good chain those kinetic pulses together Wraith Lord has survived double cap for Twadali who does have a VP deficit despite this run of pretty good engagements is going to get a triple here. Dire Avenger is trying to repair the Wraith Lord. It's going to take a while though. It's 1100 hit points at level 1. Looted Tank could also do some repairs. Mechboy is a repair hero. Sluggers being the repair unit for Orcs. There we go. There's some Mechboy repair. Pretty useful having repair on a teleporting hero. The battery pack will also give some health back to vehicles, I believe. It says infantry there, but I'm pretty sure it does work on vehicles. Warbine are going up. Levitation field doing its thing. I believe it does uh, plasma or power melee damage when it hits you on the throwback like that. Probably power melee. Autark's done pretty well. Just unable to stay in those engagements for very long. As soon as she gets targeted by the Shooter Boy, she kind of melts. Hasn't had her shield up from what I've seen. Torali's waiting. Ungrathul has to approach. She, he's going to grab the southwest and then try and maybe hit, hit from two sides. Can try and get around here with the Banshees maybe and the Autark. 
Storm boys are on their way to level three. There's a webway up. A little bit of a heal from the Autark. Spirit stones maybe from the Farsia to try and even up those fights. Looks like seems like the Storm boys have the upper hand fighting the Banshees right now because of that battery pack. 184, 79, and because of all that Dakar as well. Level 3 and level 2 Shooter Boys have done awesomely well. There's the 2 to 1. Ungrathul down to 72 VPs, has to make a move, and here it is. These guys infiltrated from that webway. Warp Spiders on the field now for Ungrathul. Teleporting range infantry. Some good DPS. Or top very low now. Farcia going for a decap but just gets melted by range fire. Put fortune on herself, I think. Didn't save her. Ungrathul desperate to get one of these VPs now, but it's much easier said than done. What is this? Have sluggers on the prow southwest too. Put pressure on that VP. Not giving Ungrathul a moment to rest. So it's going to be a double. Maybe even triple. Not sure if Ungrathul can spare anything to go down and contest that VP. Surely though, needs to repurchase the Farsia. Wraithlord goes in. Under massive threat though from the tank buses and the tank. There's a Stormbird jump. Beautifully timed on the Banshees. Gets rid of them immediately. Wraithlord is going to go down, and that might be GG right there for Ungrathul. Double cap it is. Warp's is getting melted. Did get their haywire off. But um, there is the game. Tyler Lee takes it with some very smart engagements from Tier 2 onwards. The Shooter Boys did fantastically well. Ungrathul didn't really have an answer to them. And they uh, had a big impact in all these fights. Farsi was level 4. With a level 5 mech, super tough beam at the end. There you have it guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, people injured here, back with some Elite League. This is Greentooth Jungle Redux. And on the blue side, Dark Riku is a Lick to Alpha melee specialist. Gonna infiltrate and disrupt with some powerful offense and a bit of support too. Up against Piano is a Warlock melee spellcaster. Gonna leap into combat. Powerful support, disruption, and offense. Exodite's Elite Scheme. Very fancy headgear for this Warlock. What do we got going on? We got Banshees. We've got double Termagants. What else could you ask for? Following around, around their Lictor Alpha, their Hormagons off on capping duty somewhere. We've got this contested VP mid. Naturals in the southeast and the northwest. Kind of a long map east to west, which might favour some Eldar Webway shenanigans late game. If we get to late game. Banshee's on the prowl, looking for some Termigants to chop up. They've found some, maybe. Dire Avengers in support. Not sure where the Warlock is. Capping that. Banshee's able to get in. Eating a flesh hook though. And that causes a retreat. The Lictor Alpha being very sneaky. Waiting for them to engage the Termigants. Waiting for them to get too close. And uh, flesh hook to the back of the neck. We've got one of them. Two of them dropped. There's the aspect of fleetness now. Warlock. Deals with the Cormagaunts thanks to a Destructor, I imagine, since he's lost some energy there. Destructor, one of the starting abilities of the Warlock. Cormagaunts in a full retreat. There's some Spore Mines for Dark Riku to further cause misery to these Banshees. And a Warrior Brood now to get some Synapse on the field. Banshees able to jump over stuff now. They get their Warshout too and some more hit points from the Aspect. Warlock is going to engage, yes. Special attack is dodged there. Jumps in. Double turn against 
able to engage, eat a destructor. They don't have their toxin sacks yet. Rickard going for the warrior brood as his first... No, not his first power purchase. The small miners technically, I believe, cost a little bit of power. Lictor really got torn down there, almost taken out. War shouts causes a mass retreat of the termigants. Warrior brood will now not engage by themselves. Spawn mines coming in for a flank. Hormagaunt's capping. Warlock now backing away. We've got rangers and we've got a shuriken on the field. Almost. Rangers are on the field. Snipe infantry that can support with some awesome abilities. Uh oh. Warlock ran into some warriors who were not happy to see him. It turns out. Almost took him out. What is this? Spawn mines. Annoying some Howling Banshees doing the damage of a time green crap. Hormagaunts. A little bit late to react. Could have maybe eaten one. At least her legs off or something. But they get away. Amazing. We're a brood not wanting to attack head on when there's a shuriken round, obviously. They found some rangers to chase. There's that kinetic pulse. But they get in there. One of them gets in there, leaps on, and more leaping. And those claws are just ripping them apart. Taking out two of the models there. Pretty damn good work from those warriors. 477 to 414. Piano not happy with some kind of retreat going on. Those rangers, I think, maybe couldn't retreat because of all those knockbacks or something. Or at least didn't want to retreat them because they would have took more damage as they lay on the ground from the knockback. Ouch. Lictor Alpha is a threat for sure. That flesh rip doing some good work early on. Piano happy to still engage here with the Shuriken backing him up. Some infiltration from the Rangers. Pathfinder gear. Warlock gets in. Destructor, ouch, painful stuff. Dark Riku blobbing up those double tummy against a little bit. Leaves them much more susceptible to destructors and stuff. No immolator yet from the warlock though. Maybe saving to maybe get the Witchblade of Kona up in tier 2, which is what we're seeing quite a lot recently. Hormagons have flanked around to the Shuriken. Might get a model off them. Nope. But now they're going to eat some generators. So they have their, they do have their adrenal glands. With eight models buffed up by adrenal glands. You can't underestimate those fellas. Rangers capping. Spawn mines still around. Now being engaged by the Banshees. Who will happily take them out. 477 to 306. Dark Riku with a pretty sizable tier 1, uh, VP lead in tier 1. They will very much be thinking of tier 2 right now. Piano goes. Riku will be a little bit behind. Having spent on double toxin sacks and adrenal glands and pheromone and the warrior brood and the spore mines of course. Some power output there for sure. Dire Avengers do not have their aspect. Not sure where they're headed. Out oh, towards the VP, maybe, or maybe just wreck point. Yep, gonna decap the wreck point. Being a position this uh, Garni weapon team right, it's gonna be tough for Dark Cricket to approach. Especially since these Rangers can spot the infiltrated Lictor Alpha. Banshee's there, doesn't want to engage them with no war gear. Well, pheromones. Doesn't really help the Lictor Alpha in combat. Power bashing. Shuriken needs to move up a little bit. There we go. Gonna get all the gens, I think. I think so. Warrior Brood getting caught by the Banshees. Those guys are heavy armor or heavy infantry. And the power weapon of the Banshees would slash through them pretty damn well. Almost got them. Looks like they are gonna finish it off. There we go. Well done, Termigant, fellas. Tier 2 now for Riku. Piano would love to get a Wraith Lord up, I'm sure. Just beat down the Lictor Alpha and the Warriors. 
Banshee's almost getting in. Riku doing a decent job chaining the uh, Crippling Poison, but now the Rangers come in with the Kinetic Pulse and Banshee's able to recover and get some chopping done. Didn't drop a model there. That was pretty lucky, actually. Shuriken's gonna go and decap something. Yep. Lictor Alpha's on the prowl, though. Still level 1. Warlock is into level 2. Falcon it is for Piano, not the Wraith Lord. And a Zone Throat for Dark Riku. Zone Throats are limited to 2 these days per player. Lictor Alpha's being spotted. Banshees aren't here, so he may stay in a little bit longer than he might have if those ladies were around. There's a flesh hook trying to get one of the ranger models. One of them did go down, but I think it was already down. 467, 247. Banshee's a little bit late to the party. Where's the warriors at? Oh, they're capping. Looks like they killed a dire avenger, maybe. There's that falcon. Some good firepower on that thing can try and focus down the warriors, but the zone throat is a threat with the focus warp blast. Do the Warriors have their Adrenal Glands? They don't yet. That's a lot of damage on the Banshees and the Dire Avengers. Banshees now engaging. Warrior Brooder there. On retreat path. Grenade goes in. Not the greatest one ever. And Banshees are in trouble. Warrior Brood though. Even more trouble for those guys. Oh wow. Really turn that fight around. The Falcon making a massive difference as you might expect. Warrior Brood did not get away. Banshee's able to finish them off. Yep, Banshee's indeed. Able to reinforce, of course, off the Falcon. His own throat was getting shots in, but it was enough. I thought the Tyranids had that fight. Especially when those Warriors came in. He was able to put so much damage on those Warriors so quickly. 421 to 247. Lictor now getting caught by a suppression. Dark Quicker needs to try and recover here. The Falcon's going to be a massive pain in the ass to deal with. There's that focus warp blast. Did not seem to get a rear armor hit there. Maybe they can't get rear armor hits or something? Not sure. What is this? Hormagaunts. Going to go and eat some power again, I suppose. Dropping in is a Venom Brood. New addition for 2.8. A pretty damn good drop to have. Anti vehicle unit right in the field whenever you want. Wherever you want. 392, 247. Just a couple of volleys got the Falcon down to half health, I think, but one of those volleys was a rear armor. Banshees have found the Hormagaunts. And now they need to retreat through the Banshees. And it's a labored retreat. Looks like they will get away. You see the Exarch there with her dual swords. Those guys have a scary amount of power melee DPS now on the squad. So Falcon will now be under threat from the Venom Brood. Won't be able to get quite as close and be quite as brave. Warlock. Oh, now has Warp Throw. Gonna say he has no war gear, but he made me a liar. 339 to 247. Can Dark Cricket come back into this? Warp throw is gonna be a massive deal because everything in Dark Cricket's arm is gonna be affected by it. Could throw a bunch of stuff into a grenade, into Banshees. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough. Need to try and keep the uh, Warlock on his face with the Flesh Hook maybe to start the fight. The Eldar will retake the mid. There we go. Victor, though, he's over here. So we might get a. I'm going to get two to one for piano, but if Riku gets this back, that could switch around. Doesn't look like piano is going to contest that natural victory point right now. Banshees were knocked off the cap there by the pathing of the Falcon, as you saw. So he's not finished that cap. And here comes a bunch of turning stuff. Warlock is there. There's the warp throw. 
Rickham spotting it, doesn't like it. Banshee's getting in there too. That's going to be so hard. So hard to deal with. Can crippling poison the Banshees, but um, if you're just thrown into them, it doesn't matter. Lictor might need to be around for the pheromones to do their thing. To have a chance at those fights. Formagaunts will now go after the southeast VP, I think. 2 to 1 cap here, 3 0 2, 2 4 7. Slight VP lead now for Dark Recruit. Tier 3 for Dark Recruit. And with a decent amount of resources in the bank, too. Yano not really putting enough pressure on the power here, I don't think. Gonna brood. Just getting chopped to pieces by the Banshees. They're a massive threat here. His own throat certainly doesn't want to meet them in combat either. There's a double now for Piano. Can Riku get something big and scary up in tier 3? Not too far off it. Not too far off it. And here's a Wraith Lord to deal with now. Piano should be more aggressive going after the power here. Looks like Banshee's going after the VP. This power's been sitting here. Doesn't want to overcommit, of course. Doesn't want to overextend stuff. But you need to use the Falcon just to just have a look at it. Shoot it up a little bit. Make Riku split. And think about his power. 2-3-3, two, 2-4-7, three, three, two, double cap here for Piano still. Lick to Alpha goes after that Northwestern VP again. So it's again not going to be around in this fight. There's the warp throw. Into a grenade, maybe. Grenade came a bit late. But got a couple of models. Now the Wraith Lord charges in. Venom Brood are not going to be able to stand and fight. Yeah, the, the warp throw just... It's a pain. It's a pain. Tyrant's Guard might have been good to... Uh, not to get thrown around or just charge in and do some work, but um, going for the tier three, having to reinforce though after every fight is slowing down the acquisition of scary monstrous creatures. One eight six two four seven. Rangers with a kinetic pulse. Lictor Alpha continues the decap. Maybe some some menacing visage to get the Banshees off the field would be pretty good. Haven't seen a whole lot in combat from Elixir Alpha. There's a Carnifex though. War shouts in amongst the Termigants. And a big retreat off. And still though, Piano is not going after this power. Playing it safe. Former Gaunt's able to get this VP back. They might go across the map after this power now. Warlock taking his natural back. Banshee's on the chase. Almost got that Lictor Alpha. 175, 242. There is a Carnifex hitting the field now. What the hell do you get though? Do you get Thorn back? Barb Strangler would be tied up by the Wraith Lord. And shot up by the Falcon. Uh, maybe a Bright Lance too. Yeah, it's gone for Thornback. Didn't want to get Venom Cannon. And then get tied up either. Thornback gives you... A chunk of hit points. Not sure if you get more melee damage. I think you do. But the hit points is the main thing. And of course the charge. Might allow you to chase and get that last hit on the falcon or something and of course escape double wraith lords here from piano i didn't even notice that second one come out banshees now fighting a carnifex which is not great for them but double wraith lords in this guy is not great for the carnifex either former gaunts sorry rippers there in on the shuriken carnifex charges away we did have venom brood and the zone throat firing upon one of the Wraith Lords. Got it down to half. Carnifex now needs to march back to base to heal up. Tyrannus cannot repair units. 120 to 242. Or heal them, really. 
Zonethrop has a heal over time aura, but that's pretty much it. Piano needs to retake. Oh, Bright Lance is up, by the way. Gonna need to use those Rippers again to get in on it, I think. What did the Hormagons do? Oh, they just capped this, another idol. Oh, they're not actually capping it. A misclick here, there we go. 117242, got my colours mixed up there. Ranges on capping duty. Still no attempt to go for this power. I mean, it means Piano's not in danger of ever overextending and getting flanked and therefore having stuff off the field. But it's also allowing Ricky to stay in this game. Maybe a bit longer than would have been possible with almost 300 power here. He's not super far off getting another Carnifex or maybe even a Swarm Lord. Lictorath is in a fight. Warlock and Lictorath without a weapon upgrade. You see the Lictorath doing way more DPS. There's around 60-ish, I think. The Warlock way, way lower than that. 117-226 on the VPs. There's a 2-1 to one for Dark Riku. Certainly has kept pressure up on the VP, but down goes Elixir Alpha. Banshee's able to chase. Level 3, these ladies have done fantastically well. There's the kind effects, though. Healed up and ready to roll. Wraith Lord not completely prepared. Riku looking for another avenue of attack here, perhaps. Just going for the VP. Force Piano to go over there. Uh oh. Hormagants have been spotted. They get the cap and now run the hell away. Are they just going to be chased down here? They might be. Riku sensing an opportunity to push. Bright Lance needs to be dealt with. He's going to do a hell of a lot of damage to the Kine effects. Zone Threat will get a shot. Didn't hit the central mass though. Kine effects gets in. Didn't get an attack off. But they are forced to retreat. Is it worth it for Riku to push now with the Bright Lance off the field? Doesn't seem super eager. Wants to just get this VP right now. Hormagons were wiped out. There's a second Carnifex on the way. Autark dropping in. It's a pretty good drop. Gets all the turners off the field. Riku unable to finish the cap. But did get the decap. And now with the second Carnifex. That could be, uh, that could be something. Double Thornback is probably what I'd do here. But they might want to mix it up. Riku with a Venom Cannon or a Barbed Strangler. Venom Cannon especially because there's three vehicles on the field for Piano. Venom Cannon, if it can keep it out of melee, would do massive amounts of damage to those things. 116 to 214 on the VPs. Going to be a triple, I think, for Piano. Conifex hits the field now. Here's the first one. There's the second. No sign of an upgrade right now. This Conifex moving in. Goes after the Falcon. Down it goes. Zone Throat getting a shot in there too. With the Focus Warp Blast. Job done for Riku. Second Conifex still doesn't have an upgrade. He's going for the Barb Strangler. Was not expecting that. That would be brutal for the Banshees, that's for sure. Doesn't want to get caught here, this guy. Couple of good melee hits on the Autark. Spawns some Spore Mines. Taking so much damage, though. And that's a shoulder mounted Bright Lance here. He needs to try and put pressure on his Wraith Lords, he's just going to lose this Carnifex. Marched it in a bit too far there. Does survive. Running out of VPs though is Dark Recruit. Two to one. Banshee's getting in. Almost. Termigate's trying to get on the VP. There's desperation here from Riku. Unable to start the cap properly though. I think they dropped models which made them stop capping kind of thing which is weird Termigants are going to fall triple now for Piano again second con effects coming out just slightly too late I don't think the Barb Strangler was the way to go here 
double thorn back would have been brutal. And there's the game. Piano takes it with a double Wraith Lord build, is not expecting that. And uh, able to hold that VP without putting really any pressure on the power. That warp throw was such a pain in the ass mid game for Dark Cricket to deal with. Went for the tier 3. Might have been better off getting a couple of Tyrant Guard out. Impossible to know right now. But I'm um, an entertaining one. Thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, people interested here, back with some Elite League. This is Vulcan Pits, and on the blue side, Don Freeman with a Plague Champion starts off range combat with a damage over time. Bolter can get melee weapons, some decent utility and support, can build turrets and repair, but it's very slow. Up against red side is Adila with a Mech Boy, teleporting hero that fights range combat, puts out some good damage, can also support, disrupt, build structures and repair. I don't think I've seen this map played before. It looks very cool. The uh, Natural victory points west and north are very very close to the HQs as you can see We've got another in the southeast Vulcan by the way spelt with a C not a K so I assume We've crossed over into like the Star Trek universe or something and fellows with pointy ears were here at some point Double shooters here CSM into heretics of Freeman But yeah, very cool looking map. I'm not sure who made it Not sure who made it might have been a Dilla. North. CSM going for that natural victory point of the Orcs. Should avoid spreading out and capping. This looks relatively large when you take into account where... The, I mean, look at this. Wreck point. This contested wreck point in southeast extreme corner over there. Big champ is going to get tied up by Sluggers, but Heretic's there to help him out. Not to even Doom Blasting there, didn't want to drop a model for a Doom Blast. Even if it meant gaining a model. Wants to keep them in play. Plague Champion unable to finish the cap. But there's some Nurgle Worship. Light cover here for the CSM. Might see them barrel forward into close, com close combat on the Shooter Boys. Here's some more Heretics. Might be time to go in with no Sluggers around. Here are the Sluggers though. Closing in from the north, trying to flank around. Look at a Dakar on the Plague Champion. Now we have some grenade launchers kicking in. Slugger's not even flanking around. They're going to try and cap. What are they doing? I think they should have closed in there. As we see it, Strider Boy's got pretty low. And Freeman able to come out on top with some more Nurgle worship, giving some health regen to his units there. No Eternal War yet. Grenade Launchers being the first purchase. They're not cheap. 20 power for these things. Get two Grenade Launchers of four models and the awesome Grenade Barrage to disrupt stuff. Are you going to cap, Mr. Plague Champion? What are you up to? Just reveling in Nurgle worship right now. There we go. There's the decap. Waiting for the Orcs to approach. Going to get stuck into some shooting now. Those Grenade Launchers are really kicking some ass, but there's some Electric Armor. We now have some aspiring champion heretics. And those sluggers did not last long. Not a good start for Adila. Struggling to approach this noble worshipping army here. Did get the plague champion down. Which is certainly something. Doesn't last long under that sustained shooter fire. Maybe here we are to approach a lot better now. Heretics got down to just three models as well. Including the aspiring champion himself. Which is a chaos marine. So he's pretty mean. East side power here being built up by Adila. And a west side for Freeman. This one in the south though, completely uncapped. It's a hard map to get everything capped and fight at the same time. 488421. Storm boys on the field jumping in. 
putting instant pressure on those grenade launchers and the CSM. There's a Doom Blast to keep them suppressed. Happy to get stuck in though. Those power melee weapons doing some work against the CSM. Mekwa himself has no energy to activate his electric armor and keep it going. Stoneboy's doing some good work. Look at this though. A bile spewer plague champion now with the mucus discharge on the way too. Can keep his heretics healed up a little bit at least. Certainly keep his CSM healed up. And the debuffs from this thing and the damage make it a pretty awesome weapon if there's stuff coming right at you. Can use it to, can use it to slow down the sluggers and then turn it on the storm boys when they jump in and do big damage, to be honest. I hope this uh, wall here doesn't block generators from being built. I assume the map has been tested for such things. It's a cool map. Looters on the way for Adila. Freeman. Just kitting out his current units right now. There's that bilious discharge. And then when you fire upon the units within the discharge, they are completely locked down in movement because the two debuffs stack. 454-418. Stormboy's getting on him. He doesn't have fetid armor to unholy stench them. And there's a heal from a battery pack on the Stormboys. Oh wow, they might get the Plague Champion down here. Mechboy trying to help out with some Dak up. Stormboys jumping. Should get him and do get him. Second time the Plague Champion has fallen. Those guys both did a sink kill, I think. That's pretty rare. Heretics getting stuck in a little bit late to save the Plague Champion, but they got some models. Well done, Adila. Freeman having to repurchase again. Shooter Boy is getting bashing going as well. CSM will come and maybe get in close combat one of those fellas. Stop them from firing and do some good damage. Burners up on the sluggers. Oh, I was going to say they're going to take this fight, but there is Touch of Nurgle on the Heretics. A global ability of the Plague Champion. He didn't actually use the Doom Blast there until right at the end. If he used it earlier, those guys would have been thrown back onto the floor. He might have been able to finish them off as they lay down. Looters with their massive... Pretty awesome looking death gun. Just a bucket of bullets on the side there. Way too big to be fired by that gun by the looks of them. But hey, it's orcs. It works. Red barrage is easily dodged. There's that villious discharge again. Stormboys Storm is able to get in with a little bit of a leap. Breath of Noble heal coming in. Stormboy is jumping into the back lines, finding things to chop up, and they're doing a good job at it for now. Heretics haven't really been around. I think the fetid armor would be really good for the Plague Champion here, but it is a further investment on that guy. Freeman wanting to get to tier 2 here. He needs to be careful about that touch of Nurgle, of course, Adila. Getting on the power in numbers here. Can he get a generator down, I think, and a deep cap from the Storm Boys. Nice usage of those guys. Here comes the Plague Champion to try and dissuade them from doing so, but there is the deep cap. And we've got some Daka fighting going on. Replacing the electric armor that early was certainly a choice from a delay. You can, of course, switch between those two war gears. Takes about 20 seconds to switch between them. 429, 400 double cap for Adila. Really finished strong in tier one. Freeman, no sign of a blood pressure. Or do I think it's 60 power? There's some blood letters though. I'm gonna put pressure on those shooter boys and also use them to just go toe to toe with the storm boys. They'll do a pretty good job there. At least until the storm boys get their knob leader. Heretics coming to the southeast. This southern power still not capped by Freeman, by the way. Uh oh, CSM might get hit on retreat. These guys with an aspiring champion, which means they get their slaughter ability. There he is at the front with his chainsaw. Sluggers, knob leaders queued up. What about you fellas? 
No knob leader for these guys queued up. There's the jump. Such an awesome animation. Going after that VP again. Adila's certainly getting out there and capping pretty quick. And shooting up some power too. I guess Freeman just doesn't see this power as necessary since he has two capped right here. This one much easier for, for Adila to get to though than this one you would think. Looters capping. They scared off the heretics. Triple gens up for Adila for a while now. And there's some plague marines for Freeman. Blood letters uh, cancelled, I suppose. Plague marines give us some solidness in battle, that's for sure. But won't bring a huge amount to the offense. I was hoping for some chosen plague marines, but you need a lot of red for that, and he's used Touch of Nogal. Chosen plague marines are 200 red. 379. 383 three heretics trying to run into a whole lot of trouble there. Shooter boys getting their knob leader as you saw. Big champion going for a power bash. Got one of the generators. Slugger's in retreat path. He could go down again. There's Swamp him to help him chase and he does go down again. Bomber boys is up for the uh, Storm Boys 2 with their improved rocket packs. 361 383. Three. By improved, I guess they I guess they mean they strap a bomb to them, is it? That's improvement for the orcs. Here are the plague marines with their missile launcher and damage over time bolters, very tough. And explode on death, so if you tie things up in melee, they aren't gonna be too thrilled with taking out models. 350, 383, three. upgraded shooter boys now getting stuck in. Big shooters on the way here. There's a lot of Dakar. Oh, we have the Death Gun up for the Mech Boy. Teleporting suppression platform. There is the Bomber Boys going in. Couldn't quite hit too well. Should be aiming for this group of uh, heretics. Look at that, though. Almost got the play champion again. 350, 374. He's certainly meeting death a lot. No, he just keeps bringing him back. Adila's going to get on this VP, I think. Nope, he's going to shoot at these fellas. Stoneboy Nob Leader stunning on landing. Really bad fight for those guys to take. And they quite rightly run the hell away. Teleporting right in the face of these heretics. There's some disruption, but he did retreat just in time. Which might have saved him there if he was on the floor. Heretics would have got in and finished him off for sure. Those Plague Marines bring in something to that fight for sure because they couldn't be suppressed effectively. Still able to shoot at a normal rate and do some damage to that mech boy. What is this? Sluggers alongside the looters. Springer trap. Getting in on these heretics here. Poor defensive, he defenseless heretics with their auto guns and grenade launcher trying to elbow those sluggers. One to one cap VPs are very, very even. Double Plague Marines here for Freeman. Able to stand and shoot and outshoot these looters, that's a short. These fellas aren't shooting though. Look at this. Only, only the missile launcher model is shooting. That was a big mistake there. Might have been able to finish those guys off. Oh wow. Awesomely hit Bomber Boys and then jumping in for the stun. Might finish them off. That was a, that was a heavy melee headbutt from that Storm Boy Nob Leader there. Didn't quite get him, but pretty damn close. Billy's discharge coming in, which, as you may have noticed, does affect allied units, as you can see there. Nurgle spreads his love to everyone. Which I know leads to lawsuits and stuff. Shooter boy is getting away. There's some Nurgle worship to just outlast this mech boy here with those plague marines. The custom force field is up, but he's getting shot down. Big misjudgment there from Adila. Not sure what he was confused about. Oh right, he was trying to get in there and assassinate the plague champion, confused about the lack of damage on that guy. Not sure what happened there. 303, 349. I think he was happy to go in there and trade heroes, knowing that he's killed the plague champion way more than the mech boy has gone down, but couldn't quite manage it. 
favour of Nurgle is why he survived. Don't question it. CSM now with a ton of war up. Not sure how long that's been going on. Gives him a nice damage buff. Looters are being sneaky. There we go. And look at that damage at that range. Wow, takes down one of those models in seconds. Literally like one and a half second of shooting at him and he was gone. Take Champ is going to engage some Storm Boys. They are going to get a decap and they might just jump on him and stun him now. Which could be bad. Nope, they're happy to just run in. Pile in. Oh, the Storm, the Nob Leader can't get in though. Oh, he got one attack, I think. Might finish him off. That is a risky jump. Almost got him and he might lose the Storm Boys here. Does lose the Storm Boys. Got over eager, overextends them. Trying to get the kill and loses those upgraded storm boys and gets some more does a dealer map is looking very very red right now in fact freeman only has this power capped about to get his vp back but that is a very dominant map position for a dealer goes tier three cancelling those storm boys there's slaughter up on the csm Slaughtering those shooter boys if they hung around, but they do get out of there. Suppressing Plague Marines doesn't really work out, Mr. McBoy. He's level 3. And now he's suppressing a CSM, though. And runs away. Took a hell of a lot of damage again from those Plague Marines. There's me saying, don't bring a lot offensively. They've actually done really well. Plague Champion put in Billy's Discharge on himself to slow down those sluggers and able to get away almost tier three for Adila now Freeman not giving up for sure getting on this uh, VP now who's got the most DACA Hawks of course but do they have the most hit points that's the thing not always not always battery pack heal keeping his guys in the fight I was hoping we'd see some more electric armor. Especially with those grenade launcher heretics around, which take massive amounts of damage from that. And since they don't have much hit points, die pretty quick. Yeah, they still don't have their aspiring champion, those fellas. Just camping this VP here. And worshipping and doing a good job. Shooter boys unable to stand against those stinky bolters. Chosen Plague Marines now for Freeman. These are your melee variety, unique to the Plague Champion, purchased from his global bar. And they are pretty awesome. Power melee damage over time weapons. I believe the damage over time is actually heavy melee as well. They can get in and do some work against the vehicle, even. 197 to 345, 2 to 1 cap for the blue team. Blue team? I say Freeman. Freeman is the blue team. CSM getting persuaded to leave, but Freeman was on this VP for a hell of a long time. Take champion has gone down again, by the way. Commando's on the field. Freeman coming back into this with the power of Nurgle. Chosen Plague Marines have found the commandos. A little bit of Dakar knocks them over. And they're able to escape. That green crap you see on those fellows is the Nurgle's Rot. A debuff from the Chosen Plague Marines which causes a zombie to spawn when an effective unit dies. A zombie under the control of the Plague Champion. Sluggers, are you actually going to engage those Plague Marines there fellas? Because they've got some green crap inside them that comes out when you kill them. Adila is close to getting an ob squad on the field. Pretty close, but with um with the Bio Spewer and Chosen Plague Marines and Heretics that can Doom Blast. We'll see if he does go for an OBS. No, goes for flash gets here. 162 to 334, double cap for Adila. Freeman, oh, contesting this VP. Noxious Cloud able to, yep, see those sluggers off very effectively. Almost took him out there, the slug 
knob. The slugger knob survives. 138 to 334. Still that double cap. Freeman just struggling to contest the whole map here with this relatively slow army he's got going on. Not that orcs are especially quick. But a teleporting hero makes a big difference. Might get these shooter boys down. Nope. They live. Certainly some reinforcing to do though in Adila's army. Doesn't have a lot of requisitions to do it. Here are the flash gits. They have their git finders. And they will find some gits to shoot for sure. Start off with snaz guns. Tons of piercing DPS can also get some blasters going on. Which you may see here. Just kind of hanging out for now. So Daka from the commandos and the mech. Got to keep trying to keep stuff away from his VP here. Freeman is determined for sure. Can't keep a hold of a lot of power, so screw it. Just to stay tier two, get plague marines. What could go wrong? Sluggers chasing off those fellas. So Adila retains that contested VP, but Freeman is still on this. He's still on it. With the two natural VPs relatively close together, he's got a chance here of contesting them both. And here's some serious dacking out. They do, a, I think, like 30 something DPS each, these flash kits with these snaz guns. There's the 2 to 1 for Freeman. Pretty amazing. With the amount of the map that Adila had, I mean, dropping the mech boy and dropping the storm boys, set him back a little bit. I don't think Freeman's dropped unit yet. Hasn't really dropped many units from his marines and his plague marines too. And a lot of dead heretics and a lot of dead, a lot of downed plague champions, shall we say? But that. Biola Spear has been awesome. Up to level 4 now, this fella. Adela retains his VP. Still a 2 to 1 cap. 118, 319. I mean, Freeman's putting in effort, but Adela still has a big lead here. What is this? Chosen Plague Marines against Sluggers. Surely, Chosen Plague Marines win that fight. The Sluggers are level 2, very nearly level 3, and fully upgraded. But um, this is what Chosen Plague Marines are meant to be doing. So let's see how this goes. There's Nurgle's Rots getting a good special attack and yet creating a bunch of slugger zombies there. Well, one of them. Would have been more if those guys stuck around. Pretty decisive fight there for the Trojan Plague Marines. And upgraded sluggers, no pushover. Those commandos went down. Dreadnoughts now on the way for Freeman. Can they turn this around? 97 to 319. What does Adila get here? Doesn't want to tank really because of the double Plague Marines. Do you just get more flash kits or do you get the knobs going? And just hope that they can soak up all of the damage that comes their way. What is this? Chosen Plague Marines in retreat, I think. Yep. Tons of Dakar on their faces. Freeman gets back on that VP though. For how long? You see Adila... Just bring the knobs to the north, knowing that they can't fight the Trojan Plague Marines. They can't fight this, apparently, too. With a well-timed barrage there. Setting up the forcing of the retreat. It's a weird boy, a good choice from Adila. Here's a Dreadnought, though. Armed with the auto cannon by default and that underslung twin-linked bolter, I think it is. Which uh, can't be discounted. Freeman has the VP. Can Adila dislodge him from it? It's not going to be easy. Weirdboy was cancelled. I think that was a really good choice because look at this blob of stuff here. Touch of Noble Heretics making the Sluggers flee. Might get onto the Flash Gits here. Not quite. Might well, have got a few attacks in. Custom Force Field sends them flying. Dreadnought has come into base. Taking 
beam me death gun shots. Not sure what he was up to here. Dreadnought goes down. LOL from Freeman. It's an odd one. Maybe the Dreadnoughts were struggling to path around the HQ there. Couldn't get the attacks on those looters. Triple cap for Freeman. Down go those heretics. Down goes the plague champion again. Sluggers must be level 3. Yes, they are well into level 3. Getting their knob, knob leader back too. We got uh, commandos going after this. They do have that 50% faster capping trait. But they don't want to fight chosen plague marines in melee combat. Little burst of Dakar. Love the Dakar, I think that is. But um, they're going to get a commando zombie here. Oh no, they're not. Nurgle's Rot is not active. There it is. A little bit late there with the Nurgle's Rot. Adela will get his natural victory point back, but needs two of them. Here we go. Don't think Sluggers will finish the decap though. Nope. See us send down to two models. Level four though, they've certainly killed a lot of stuff. We've got a bunch of commando zombies. And the Chosen Plague Marines able to retake the VP over there. 97 to 141. 2 to 1 cap for Freeman. Looking kind of depleted though. Lost some heretics. Lost that Dreadnought. Still has a whole bunch of Plague Marines. Two of them level 3. The Chosen Plague Marines who have done really well so far at level 2. Looks like the flash kits are going to be able to retake this VP. At least they get the decap. Freeman coming straight back after the north here. And as we've seen, Plague Marines don't care that much about being suppressed. Mechboy getting in there, drops the rocks. And Freeman did not retreat everything there. Loses the CSM. Not sure if that was a misclick or something but you'd expect a full retreat there only retreated out the heretics CSM oh did they survive oh one model got away 88 to 125 on the VPs Plague Marine still contesting this point somehow there's an Oxus Cloud global ability of the Plague Champion wow did a hell of a lot of work to those shooter boys almost finished them off Sluggers now level 4. Can continue to be a threat. Chosen Plague Marines dropping a model. As you can see, when they explode, they actually heal themselves. Which is something that regular Plague Marines do not do. They will heal allies with their explosion, but not their own models. What if they heal other Plague Marines? 81 to 125. These guys momentarily confused by the infiltration of the commandos there are persuaded to leave. Adela with the 2 to 1. Plague Champion back on his feet. His level 6 has killed a lot of stuff with the Bile Spewer. But he's gone down at least like 4 times I think. CSM now capping. Shooter boys down to one model each are they? Yes I think they are down to their knob leader each. I did a really struggling to get a decap on this natural VP on the west side. Looters barely getting away there. Where are they? Damage over time. Takes them out. 66, 1, 2, 3. That was from the, that was from the Plague Marines over there. They did a floating lot of resources. Looks like they is waiting for the battle wagon here. I guess that'll be a thing. Nope. Get some more flash kits going. No weird boy, huh? 66 to 110. I was looking forward to see that weird boy out. CSM are going to get Daka to death if they're not careful, and they do. Hard for these players to uh, keep an eye on both sides of this map here. The Chosen getting back in. What level are these fellas now? Level 2, up to 2200 hit points flat. Pretty close to level 3 as well. They are a menace. Takes them a while to get over here, but once they get over here, they're doing some good work. 
Sluggers watching the north. Commandos barely getting away. We have more chosen plague marines. Yes, we do. And why not? They've done fantastically well so far. We know that sluggers can't really fight them. We'll see if level 4 sluggers can fight them. There is the Nurgle's Rot. And that's a hell of a lot of Dakar for the Chosen Plague Marines to deal with. But then the zombies start to come. And they turn the tide of the fight big time. That's Touch of Nurgle on them too, I believe. And uh, Touch of Nurgle's damage stacks, or rather scales, with the... Uh, the health of the model that died. So the cho chosen plague marine triggers it. It's going to do a hell of a lot of damage, and of course, stack with their own explosion, their own death explosion. Forty-one to eighty-six. It's so close. Freeman has the two to one now. Doing Nurgle proud as a level seven plague champion, just looking after this VP now with that bile spewer. Might put a turret up or something. 41 to 75, he can't spot those commandos who might have enough hit points to get the decap under fire over there. Mechboy getting a cap with his custom force field up. 40 to 70. Single cap here for Adila. So much DAC up. Not even the Chosen Plague Marines can stand against it. Level 3 Chosen Plague Marines too. Now regular Plague Marines trying to tank it. These heretics should be getting involved, but Freeman obviously watching elsewhere here. Slugger trying to get into base. Adela has the west side, 17 to 70. Plague Marines do get away, and they actually capped that VP too, but Adela might have this. Adela might have this here. Love the Dakar keeping these Plague Marines away from the cap. There's the double. GG from Don Freeman. And... There you have it. End of the game, level 7 Plague Champion and a level 7 Mac. What an awesome 1v1. Awesome map too. I liked it. Thank you for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.